amendments to the agenda. I don't have any amendments to the agenda. Um, all right, the meeting is called to order at 6.30. And we're going to start with um, a time of public comment. So if there's anybody who would like to make public comments, this is one time you have also time at the end of the meeting. Come on. Yes, Mark. Uh, Mark, go ahead. Mark, are you there? All right, uh, somebody else wanted to speak? Hi, my name is Sarit Warner, and um, and I'm here representing the Phone Free Coalition of um, Parents. And I'm not sure if this is the time for me to speak, but yes. um, we we've gathered. Um, we have a letter, and we've had a petition going around. We've got over 120 signatures, and um, I was hoping that I could read um, a letter from. Yes. Uh, okay. <clears throat> So, um, letter of support for Woodstock Middle and High School to be fully phone free all day. To whom it may concern, we support a phone free school procedure at Woodstock Middle and High School where phones are fully away for the day. We, the undersigned parents, teachers, and community members, support a school environment for our, all of our children, pre K to 12th grade, that maximizes opportunities for human to human, face to face interaction. We have read the research. It's abundantly clear that bell-to-bell, -bell, mobile phone-free school environments will make huge strides to create a positive environment where the health of the students is prioritized. The presence of mobile phones, earbuds, and smartwatches distracts from learning and also interrupts opportunities for students to learn healthy interaction with each other. We support implementation of the best practices definition of the phone-free schools. From time of arrival to school or first bell to the last bell, students will not be allowed to access mobile phones, earbuds, or smartwatches. These devices will be turned off upon entering the building and stored away in public in specific locker that is kept in the administration office or in a lockable pouch, such as the yonder pouch. The school can determine which method they want to use. This procedure will be communicated with all community members and there will be an abundance of education opportunities for the community and students to understand why this is healthy for students in the community. Three, the children who need to be in touch with their parents during the school day can use the phone in the main office. If parents need to reach their children, they can call the school main office as well. Four, there will be exceptions in place for children with medical needs documented by a licensed physician, nurse, practitioner, or for children with educational needs documented in an IEP plan. Um, so we've got abundant research and over 120 local um, parents in support of this so far. We're really excited. There's um, major momentum. All of Lamoille County has now um, gone phone free, such as very and also very uh, Hartford. And um, there's other schools. I mean, uh, Europe and Britain are um, ahead of us in this, but the U.S. is catching up and we think that um, Vermont could be um, a trailblazer already it's happening and um, if Woodstock takes moves to implement this um, it would be great we're very motivated and thank you for listening you're welcome thank you I'm sure we'll hear more about this the phone free movement thank you so much thank you is there anybody else who would like to speak during public comment All right, then at this point, we will move into our reports, uh, starting with Sherry's report. Um, and I think I'll be covering a few others. It's Jim and I and um, Ralph, Jen, and Shane are on vacation. Um, so first, um, one of the things that I try to accomplish over the summer is to begin to establish my goals for the year. Um, professional goals will focus on first um, establishing um, free authentic family and education uh, together teams. It's based on work out of Colorado and a presenter that I saw last year. So I've been reading his book and looking at how can we create teams that meet on a regular basis and really focus that around issues 
that are uh, raised by parents. So we'll be working on that over the course of the year and working with principals on that. The second is something that Raph and I have been working on um, in our first strategic plan. We really looked at how do we prepare students for post-secondary decision-making um, over the, the five years of the first strategic plan. We tried uh, a number of iterations that we really didn't feel strongly about. So Raph and I have been looking into the idea of creating a semester-long course We'll be designing that um, over the course next year. And to add on to since writing this, we have worked out um, a consultant through Stanford University who will be coming and working with us as a team with community members, students, uh, administrators around how do we make decisions around what our future is. And then we came up with a tricky name, Future You. So that's all uh, based on coursework that's currently offered at Stanford University, Dartmouth College, um, will be one of the first public high schools to offer the course. Um, a number of private schools have been doing this work. We learned from this consultant, but not public schools. So we're really excited about that opportunity and offering that to our students. Um, on July 24th, we gave a tour to our interim secretary, Zoe Saunders, Director of Operations, uh, Jill Briggs Campbell, and AOE School Facilities Project Manager, um, Bob Donahue. We started at nine o'clock in the morning and we basically had to ask them to leave at 1130. So we had quite the conversation, not only on the condition of our building, but education in Vermont, the, the positions that we've taken, how we've moved education forward. It was a really exciting dynamic conversation. Jim and Ben and Carrie were also part of that. Um, we didn't know that Jill and Bob were coming. They just kind of showed up. And so we are so practiced and giving our spiel that we just, walked through it for a couple hours. It was very exciting. And we really had a responsive group that um, we were really excited to work with. So it worked much better than we thought. Um, Jim and I also were able to meet with two representatives from the Mountain Views Innovation Fund, had a dynamic conversation with Amy Daigle and Madeline Reynolds around how their work and their funds can help support our work. And we identified two priorities. One is around community engagement and the other one is around that post-secondary planning. So they'll be providing, they're reviewing some budgets, some proposals on how they can support that work. So that was really exciting. And then in the middle of the month, we had our um, annual leadership retreat. So for three days, working with principals and directors to talk about um, the upcoming vision for the next school year, um, the opportunity to take a deep dive into critical work of the district and appreciate the diverse group of educators represented on the leadership team. Um, one thing we did spend a great deal of time with and that I shared with our faculty and staff is that we're gonna be having some challenging conversations around our budget based on the yield bill and some other thing factors that were really outside of our control. So we really began to develop a framework for making those decisions and, and having universal agreement. In the old days, we were basically said, here's your department, cut 10%, come back with what you're gonna cut. And, and that's literally how we did it. And we're trying to have a much more thoughtful process as we're facing some significant budget concerns and Jim and I have been meeting since that time. So, um, well, it's not a, an easy process, but it's been a really great conversation in terms of how we talk about that uh, to make sure impact is similar across the district. Um, from RAF, um, just wanted to shout out some of his work. We've hired a new technology uh, department systems technician for Woodstock Elementary School, Mark Harmon, who's from Brownsville. Um, he's also, Raph and a, a group of teachers have been working hard to develop a framework around artificial intelligence, what's a policy and what are our practices. He's reached out to two different individuals to support that work. Um, one is, um, Jesse Duke, who will be working on teaching systems lab, or from the teaching systems lab at MIT. Um, and also Greg will help us in terms of how do we develop these policies. And then Greg Klossick will be coming in to do professional development with educators around generative AI. So again, trying to be ahead of the work instead of responding to it. Um, Director of Student Support Services, I just have to applaud Shana Kalvitsky. She has become our recruiter number one. That woman has left no rock unturned. And as of today, every special ed position is filled. So, awesome. Which if you look around the state, that has been incredibly hard, but she has chased every single lead and then followed through and followed through and followed through. So 
Um, you can read all her other stuff, but that's something I think is extremely noteworthy. She's worked extremely hard. Um, she's also working with the MTSS team. Our two in-service days will be in the fall, and they'll really focus on student and classroom data and how does that data inform instruction. So we'll have one day to look at what is the data about your students in your classroom, and the next day that we'll be using that data to turn how do we what are we going to teach for that year and how what are we going to do to focus that work. Um, from Jen uh, Settles, um, she her website has really creates a real depth of information for parents and community members about our programs and our assessment. She even has included a link a link for feedback from the community. Um, we had a, a cohort two training for ten teachers came in for three days to work again on our ELL, ELA curriculum. So she's using up every single S or penny to make sure that we've got everybody on board with the, the new ELA curriculum. Um, in addition, we had other, she helped organize educators for the summer um, to do some planning. Again, this will be our last summer that we can offer these stipends to teachers to come in to do district-wide work and come together on teams. That was also funded by ESSER. And then she's helped to organize, or she's organized the peer mentorship program. We'll have 18 pairings this year, new <laughs> teachers with veteran teachers, veteran teachers receive a stipend and meet throughout the school year to help support um, their transition, no matter if they're a brand new teacher or new to our district, so they have support about our systems. All right. Uh, any comments oh. on any of these reports or questions? I was interested to ask you all in what you think of the idea of a decision-making class. I loved it. You actually brought that up this past year just quickly one time, and I, I like immediately latched onto that idea. I thought it was so good. Just like, you know, a, a life skills course or just something that we could graduate our students with if they're going to college or or not, to the military, to an apprenticeship. I think it's great all around. Yeah. I'm sad I'll miss it. <laughs> yeah. Good. Any any other comments from any questions about any of the reports so far? Okay, see, see, you. see a thumbs up. Um, all right, then if, I think Jim, you're next. Yeah. Or you can... Sure, I didn't hear anything on the agenda, but I can tell you that we finally have the FY23 audits in. And so I'll be presenting them to Finance Committee if Ben puts them on the agenda. I just sent him a memo about it for August and bring to the board in September. Um, this year and has been a much smoother close than last year because we spent all 12 months on the same software platform. And uh, we're well on our way to getting them done early this year instead of late, like I think they were for the prior year. Um, Thursday, we actually moved to the newest version of our software, which has been out almost two years and finally Vermont signed the paperwork and uh, we're going to it. And we're really excited about that because it offers all these things we've been asking for and learning about and not been able to use. So, uh, so that's good. Um, I can share real quickly uh, that Joe and his summer projects are going well. Um, the air handling systems at the Reading School have all been torn out and the new ones are there and they'll be in place and that building will be up and running with actual functioning uh, air handling and filtration systems uh, when school starts. Their parking lot? Parking lot's brand new and um, yeah. The our, craters are gone. <laughs> it's taking the challenge out of driving through, but yes. <laughs> um, and and we just had a lot of other projects around all the other buildings, but those are the two big ones we're really at the Reading School this year. Great. Any questions for Jim? All right, thank you. Um, yeah, oh, Anna. Yeah, I just wanted to say the Reading Elementary parking lot is brilliant. Um, we've had several um, play dates down there on um, bikes and roller skates. So thanks for getting it done. <laughs> thanks. All right, um, then I think the next thing is the strategic plan goals update. I'm sharing. I'm going to try to share. You can share. Oh, Brandon, can you let me share? There we go. 
So this is marked draft for a reason. Um, the leadership team worked on this. Uh, that's part of our usual typical um, time when we're together. I'm just gonna make this smaller. Um, and so I really want, uh, I moved it into our typical format, but please know we are still working through this and you'll see that we haven't designated project managers. What the principals and directors did identify out of each of the, the primary categories in this strategic plan was a uh, objective and some strategies they wanted to work on. So, in, and I put the goals in the, the title here just so we're getting familiar. It's a brand new document, brand new goals. So first, enhancing educational programming programs and diversifying pathways. So the first objective they wanna work on is students have access to flexible pathways to achieve personal success which includes the strategies of review and articulation of pathways with, with attention to all learners that would fall within this course that we're, we're um, pitching and create opportunities to ensure student agency and intentionality for post-secondary planning. Again, that includes all learners. So that's a piece of work we wanna accomplish this year or begin the work of. In terms of vibrant home, school and community partnerships, they selected objective two to engage families with NBSD communication to build stronger partnerships and student learning. You know, Raina today is working on a new platform as a communication tool with parents, putting information in a very uh, precise way so that it is specific to an individual parent's interests and their children's interests. So that's something that will be onboarded this year. So we'll explore and implement opportunities for family partnerships and student learning and explore and implement communication strategies for family outreach. In terms of culture of belonging and purpose and joy, um, they selected objective two. So students will be empowered to own their learning and be a meaningful voice and participation in school communities. Student voice is something that we celebrate. Um, how does that happen more often um, and uh, is more anticipated by students? Um, we know, especially upper grades, elementary, that they have a voice and they're um, how do we bring that forward? And how do we know that there's a process that students can use to bring their ideas forward? So we wanna bring back and create opportunities for students to celebrate their learning. Uh, previous to COVID, we used to have many celebrations as well as investigate and implement a broader range of opportunities to develop student voice and acknowledge student contributions. We've always had a strong student council and other student committees, but so that all students have an opportunity to bring their thoughts and ideas forward. In terms of safe and supportive school environments, uh, the leadership team selected three, create safe and healthy learning environments. So advocate for greater community-based SEL resources. Uh, myself and other members of the Woodstock community used to have a community care coordinator that was removed and we're anticipate we're working very hard to bring that position back. They were a great liaison between families and the school and other resources. So really advocating for that all resources that are not within our budget and not within our bill and, and bringing those resources to bear. Review SEL supports and resources to ensure systems are consistent and coherent so that a student at one elementary school who moves to another school will have a similar experience, similar language, similar expectations. Provide planning and resources to ensure that all our campuses are healthy and safe school environments, something the board's been working very hard on. And finally, in foundational mm. systems, the leadership team selected objective to assess current infrastructure and operations with a goal of enhancing systems. So identify financial priorities and create a financial strategic plan. Yeah. We gave you a job there, the finance committee, yeah. um, something we've been working, thinking about a lot. And then develop and implement onboarding and offboarding procedures for board members and staff. So some of those structures have been in place, but how do we um, really formalize those processes? So lots of foundational work was done in the first strategic plan, and we really benefited from that. But there's still more, more work to be done. So those are uh, the next step is bringing it back to the school leadership team. We meet mid-August to identify who will be the project managers on each of these and that. That's part of the work we do every month as a leadership team is the uh, recommendation of our principals and directors. So I didn't link it in the board packet because again, I you know this, this is in a format that's even more sophisticated than was given to me. I thought, I'll do a little homework for the principals and directors. They did a lot of work to get to this point. 
So, so if you want to stop the screen share, anyone who has a question, we'll show you Ben and Sam. Sure. Oh, yeah, go, ahead, Sam. go ahead, Sam. It's not really um, a question, just a comment on, um, you know, I'm yeah. really glad to hear that you are working towards uh, getting the community care coordinator position back. Um, that uh, position and the um, woman who held it, um, she was like necessary for me in uh, getting care for my mom and uh, organizing it and going through the long-term Medicaid process. And I just think it is especially for a community that has such an elderly uh, uh, population plus you know just in general like it is a very important role so if there's anything that um I can do to help in that process or testimonial or something like that I'd, I'd be happy to um uh help in any way because I'm really glad to hear that 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 there are people who are focused on getting that position um back thank you Sam yeah um the Thompson Senior Center, again, has been great. The Hub has been a partner in that at Aquichi Health Foundation. So we've all been coming together and really advocating hard with Mount Scutney Hospital to bring those monies back because that was a really critical position. Was that Carla Campbell? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was amazing. Like, yeah. amazing. Spent a day with me, helping me with everything that needed to get done. Just really essential work. So I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. Just the strategic plan goals um, remind me, it was the board's level of kind of influence or endorsement on what the administration has just presented. Um, absolutely right. want feedback and, uh, you know, it's not a vote, but I know annually we've shared it with the board, asked for feedback of, of if these are ones that they wish for us to focus in on. And then as we go through the year, We'll report out on our progress on that work. So different principals or directors will report on progress and making in those areas. Okay, sounds like action. Any uh, action by the board, that's what you guys are going to do, right? Correct. Okay. Unless there's some other priority the board wants us to take. Right. Okay. This is the thought that the leadership team had in terms of, the and it was revamped significantly last year. I remember in the spring. Oh, the the strategic plan. Yes. Yeah, I was part of those sessions. Yes, we kind of others were. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Just, Okay. okay. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Um, now we're going to take a look at the board work plan. I think you did. You want to bring that? Up? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Give me a second. The board work plan is the document that um, primarily Ben and Sherry and I uh, and Raina in particular work on to set up our meetings each month to decide which presentations might be uh, asked for. Sometimes board members and or even the public have asked to add things to the, the work plan. So it's really, it's a working document for us and you have access to see it as well. So if you're thinking that, you know, we should have a session on something, certain months are much more loaded than others right before the budget and in the spring um, usually the april meeting has a lot of things on it as the school year gets reset and the board gets reset so typically you see that um, this is really what our agenda follows uh, the various reports the different appointments that we make where we have various um, you know, as I said, presentations, sometimes we've invited, for example, the literacy people in. We've had Raf doing things, uh, explaining to us about the statistics he collects around enrollment and um, all kinds of things like that. So right now it's kind of a bit of a skeleton because there's plenty of slots to add things in. So it would be very helpful if you as board members have specific things you would like to know more about um, and you can you can let any of us know that, and we try to accommodate where we can put those things in. Karen, question about that. So is that something that, so this is coming up for me, just about something that was brought up tonight. Um, as far as kind of protocol, you know, if I'm interested as a board member to see like where the board's at or you know how much interest there is for the board to hear more about this whole phone tree 
environment. Is that something that, you know, I mean, I'm just gonna bring it up at the meeting. I bring up with you to get on this, to get on the schedule. You know, what's sort of the best process to say, this is something I'm really interested in. Maybe the board is more generally, you know, how do we kind of see, you know, what the interest is there and 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 how much, um, you know, how we can move forward if there is. Yeah, I mean, I think at times we've taken things that were discussed in our meeting and we wanted to dig deeper. Mm -hmm. So we asked for certain things. Uh, what comes to mind was the behavioral information that right. there were a lot more males than females getting um, into disciplinary issues. So Raf had done some analysis on that and discussed it at a later date. And I think the cell phone thing, you told me that I think that, um, Aaron is going to give a presentation in the September meeting Great. to us as a board to discuss it. Yeah. I'm sure parents will want to be there for that. Sure. So yeah, that's that's a process or just directly yeah. speak to us. Yeah. Great. Because we work on the agenda usually um, the week before, well, two weeks really before mm -hmm. a board meeting. That's when we're looking at potential agenda items. And then there's some predictable ones. Yeah. Like, Budget, right, <laughs> and its impact. <laughs> okay. Any other thoughts from the board? I'm just thinking, you know. So we have those the template that you have there, but could we have something um, like what's new around the country, something like that? Like, what are some really advanced things that other boards are doing? Just to hear of like a little glimmer of something or something uh, else happening. It's on the horizon somewhere else. I don't know. I have a question for you and I was going to attend it this year. <laughs> We're going to a national conference in December that we can bring back some resources. But uh, you're speaking board specific. I think I'm thinking like uh, just room in the thing to say here are some interesting, you know, just a little, it could be yeah. 10 minutes, it could be five minutes of something that other. I mean, it could be not good things, you know, bad, bad things on the horizon that we should be yeah. uh, be aware of. Yeah, and those something to learn about, yeah. you know, so to be always looking sort of what other others have gone before us are doing. Right, and I think sometimes we pop those in. Right. Um, you know, we this last spring we did some of the, some of those things that yeah. came up anyway, topics that just came up. And the VSBA does a pretty good job keeping their eye on that sort of thing. Yes. And advisories. And I, the, I don't know if any of you get the 802. Um, yeah. That is pretty helpful. I've learned a lot of things from that one. And he's uh, he's really got his thumb on the national scene. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where yeah. I learn a lot too. Okay, well, we are on a roll. This could be our fastest yes. night ash. Could something <laughs> the same. All right, committee updates, finance committee. Yeah, I think I'm just kind of picking up on um, Sherry's report at our meeting this month. We'll be looking mm -hmm. to Jim, Sherry, the administration to give us a set of recommendations about some of the uh, the budget tightening of the belt that we're going to need to do for the next fiscal year. So, um, you know, anyone who's interested, just a reminder, uh, you know, those meetings are open to all. So if you want to come and kind of see what the administration is presenting in terms of potential reductions. If there are other ideas, by all means, over the next couple of weeks, please be uh, giving those to us because we're going to be rolling up our sleeves and beginning that hard work. When is the next meeting then? Two weeks, uh, the 19th. You're back from your trip? Yep. Okay. Great. Good. Elliot? So, policy, we have nothing new. Um, we're all up to date on what, what the uh, the committee has sent to the board, but um, I just want to say on deck, sort of, we have some policies involving uh, curriculum um, and uh, uh, educational and library material that we're working on that should have ready for the next for the next meeting. So hopefully that will be okay. um, working on a, in, in two weeks. We're going to be talking about this. So. Great. Yeah. All right, buildings and grounds. I know Bob. Oh, Bob, go ahead. Yes, would the uh, uh, policy committee be the uh, appropriate venue to to take a look at the no cell phone idea? Probably. Sounds like a motion, Bob. 
I'm not sure we need a motion for that, do we? Other than maybe just a suggestion yeah. to write a draft yeah. policy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it needs to be a motion, but I think it's on Elliot. Yeah, but if there's sentiment, that sounds that's yeah. Okay. I think we need a review of what policies may and if those need to be tweaked down, if we need a specific technology, there is a policy around acceptable use. Mm -hmm. And so whether that can be inclusive of it. Right. But I think this is more that um, we can look at what we have, but I think this is over and above. I did hear that Hanover um, has adopted a no cell phone policy. Then for Hanover? Actually, and I, I know personally there's a pediatrician in Vermont local that is also really, really interested in this. So. Well. Every teacher that I've talked to since I heard about it has said, bring it on. <laughs> so not one has said, oh, no, they need those cell phones. That's <laughs> not one. Um, Anna. Yeah, just um, since Sarah cannot uh, speak at this moment, uh, I invite her to bring any policies that she has or templates for policies to our policy committee so that they have a, a starting off point if we can't access Heartlands or other districts already existing policy so that poor Elliot and his team don't have to start from the, the drawing board. Thank you. <laughs> it's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, I love we that. Have, we, we, we have documentation. We'll be, we're, we're so happy to share this and, and join this momentum. And um, so um, we'll be in touch with the policy committee. Okay, good. very Thank good. You. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, buildings and grounds. I don't see Matt, but maybe Bob. Is it was not there? Oh, you are there. Hello. Hello. Uh, I hope you can hear me. We did not meet after the June meeting, but we'll meet um, in the next couple of weeks. And uh, you heard from Jim about the progress at Reading Elementary. I have no other updates. Okay, thank you. Um, negotiations, hiring, and retention committee. Well, I can simply say that we are probably going to be going to an arbitration on that. Um, and I'll fill the board in at another time at, in an executive session, more about the details of that. It's a technicality that we can't agree on around um, salary. So I, I'm hoping that it, it doesn't take a lot of our time and that you know either side accepts whatever the arbitrator decides. Uh, any working groups? Yeah, I'll give them for new bill. Um, obviously a lot of discussion over uh, of July and August with community members and others, a lot of interest in the bond, a lot of people asking, you know, when when are you going to bond next? I think a lot of board members, that's kind of um, front and center. In discussions with legislators, kind of uh, current and former, we still can't really get a beat on what led to the change to remove the exceptions that have kind of got us in this moratorium for, for bonds statewide. But the latest idea uh, that I've, I've spoken with couple of our legislators about is to maybe bring, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, some legislation early in the session to address this, just to give school districts the ability to pass a bond again, you know, kind of turn this back on. And if that doesn't, you know, um, smoke out the, you know, the, the, the source for this, this, uh, you know, removal of these exceptions, then that should be very um, easy. But even at that, you're looking at uh, January, and that wouldn't be much runway. So we probably would not be able to get um, you know, a bond in time for town meeting day, but we could do a special sometime in the spring. That's probably the earliest we'd be looking at for, for a, you know, a, a, a bond vote on the new bill. Um, but that's kind of the, you know, some of the discussions and developments that have happened over the um, summertime. Also want to call the board's attention to the kickoff of the Commission on the Future of Public Education. They've had their, their uh, formation meeting. One of the goals that the legislature set uh, when they formed that commission was to optimize public input. So I think we're off to a great start there by getting a building tour, you know, with the new interim secretary of education and Jill Briggs Campbell and Bob Donahue. That was phenomenal. It was really a wonderful opportunity to kind of show them what we're working with here. Uh, and all the great things that we do in spite of it, right? Um, but that was great. And then, uh, but I guess I would encourage board members that we can distribute some of the links to those those meetings, those sessions. They're um, typically 
um, you know, available to the public. I, I attended the meeting today uh, of the steering committee of the commission. It was a four hour long meeting, including an executive session for a half an hour to discuss who should be on the finance subcommittee or working group of it. Um, they may include people from the public. I thought about, I thought, mentioned it to Jim and to you, Ben, they're looking for someone who understands the financing and the intricacies of it. But um, there's a, I'd say there's a, a wide range of interests in that group. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth around who should be part of it. Um, and they're looking really to make their working groups up from within, from their own commission. Because this was just the steering committee, it was nine people, and I think there's another eight or nine that are also officially on the mm -hmm. on the commission. And this is funding system wide, not just school construction. It's the there's an yes, fine funding system wide, but then there is this construction group and they have a meeting in about a week and a half. And I I do plan to go to that one as well. Yeah. Um be great. If you could um I know that we yeah, I, I, I'll put the links out. Yeah, yeah, so that people can They're kind of kind of defined on their website. Yeah, I think you have to just bookmark it in your in your uh, bookmark bar. That's the only way because they don't come up. Yeah. You, you have to know where to look. And it, I finally figured out bookmarking. <laughs> Both of them. Well, and so. I will say, based on our, our tour, there was some pressure. We really talked about the hard decisions that need to happen in Vermont. And you know, we the four of us really heard the board when we say when you said in June, pressure needs to go back to Montpelier because at one point there was well school boards. And I chimed in, I said, school boards are volunteer groups. These are people who are elected. The power, the decisions, the hard work has to start in Montpelier. And so all of us, directors, principals, board members, really need to pay attention and really get your voice out there. Because once again, it's the, not my job. Mm -hmm. And we really have to put that energy. I know Harry and Ben have worked really hard to push that pressure back and talk to legislators. But the more board members who stand up and say, no, this is not, we've seen at 46, at 60, when the, when the decision making was put back into towns, how hard it was. And that was not a fair uh, transfer of power. That, right. You know, right. We really want it to be in Montpelier, but that's only going to happen if we all are paying attention and holding people accountable up there. Yeah, I think not to uh, blow our opportunity to get out of here on your time, but uh, if there were one thing that I would encourage people to um, <laughs> uh, to put, if you're going to make any kind of comments or during discussions in the legislation, it says that that commission will designate the locations for school buildings in the state of Vermont. We were we, one thing that we did very well by coming as close as we did with the bond vote was made a great case and created a ton of public awareness about why there shouldn't be a school here in Woodstock, right? A middle school, high school building. Um, but we need to keep the pressure on that commission to do that. Because even when we gave that tour, I mentioned that. I said, well, that commission's going to designate locations. And they were like, oh, really? Like it was news to them. <laughs> so yeah, that's a very important thing. It may be the very thing you're talking about here. Yes. So anyway, we could do this all night. Well, it, it did come up in today's meeting. And there was a definite dis everybody pushing back on, well, you know, who's going to make these decisions? How are we going to make these decisions? And they brought up, I don't know if you followed Roxbury and Montpelier, but Roxbury, um, you know, was forced into something they didn't want. And, you know, it, it's just, I can see that's a very uncomfortable topic because nobody wants to tell a town to close their school. And so right now they don't tell them that. Um, and that's, that's part of the problem. I mean, nobody wants to tell a kid that he doesn't didn't make the baseball team, right? Right. But you don't put them on the list. I, I think we are, we are in really good shape it. because we are our district. It's the schools that are one and done, like the towns that have one school, mm -hmm. and it's so tiny now they're having trouble. Right. So those are the. I think what I heard them saying is they need to join a district or they need to become part of someone else, and so that was that was the, what I heard. That's great. Yeah. Anna. Anna. In talking about having us more active in communicating with our legislators, um, so I try to keep up with the VSBA emails, and I heard something around 802, um, but is there an easy way to gather quick information about what's going on in the legislation so that we can be more active? I know uh, several of the things more recently around the finance stuff is like actually connecting individually with, with other board members, do I find this out? 
Um, but is there like one space where we could go to that would have those um, those highlights? Um, and maybe even I think of like the 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 templates that are made for um, uh, making like um, signing petitions where the petition's actually already written and you just need to sign it. Is there anything collaborative like that across the districts that um, we could tap into? I think the VSBA is the best vehicle for finding out information. They really are very, um, they, they put out a lot. And the other one that's good is the uh, AOE notes. Um, I, I, I know I get them. I don't know how I got started getting them, but they, they do a weekly distribution of things. A lot of it's just conferences and things, but every now and then there's something that's helpful to read. Is that the um, weekly field memo? The week, weekly field memo. If you go to the AOE site and you sign up for the weekly field memo, you'll get a weekly um, list of links that you can read about various things, including health care updates and things like that. The VSA, VSBA has weekly summaries of legislation, who's taking it, what action, and I, I follow the SBA as well. The, the other thing that the SBA offers, and I think you automatically should be getting that as a newsletter if you're a board member. Mm -hmm. um, I think they put you into their pool. They have a lot of trainings, um, and a couple times I sent out like an open meeting law to review it, and things like that, but they have a lot of trainings. They also have uh, forms for new board members. They have forms to the chairs. I've gone to some of their meetings. Um, unfortunately, they held it at a time when I worked, but since I don't work anymore, <laughs> I can go 12 o'clock on Friday. And well, here's so my formal report things for that, you know, for, that they offer. Okay. Right. If there are right. high level things that you think we should be acutely aware of, will you please share those via email? Yes. Um, yes. I will thank do you. that. The only other one I'd uh, chip in on is when there's actual uh, draft legislation, uh, they'll send it over to the Joint Fiscal Office. And the, the, if you look at the Joint Fiscal Office's website, they'll often put together really helpful summaries of bills. That's a great place just to kind of get your head around something. You know, they do it for legislators, so, you know, it's really dumbed down. <laughs> Thank you. Ouch. All right, Ernie. Well, I had thought twice briefly, but I just want to sort of remind the board uh, or let people know if, if they hadn't heard that uh, Charlie Kimball has offered to speak to this board about legislation that's relevant to our interests. And so if we if that was something that we wanted to do and we wanted to invite Charlie. Yeah. I think your internet is unstable. Mm -hmm. But yes, um, I know that there's a plan for some of us to meet with Charlie because he wants to learn from us and of what we're thinking. And then I think he, you know, would like to come to the board and we'll definitely set that up. I don't know if you read the paper, uh, uh, the standard had all the legislators in our districts and areas and he, his top priority was education and funding. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's in the this week's. Yeah, and I've had a number of conversations with Charlie too. Yeah, last couple of months. It'd be good to have him back in the seat. Yes. Okay. Any other working group updates? We have two sets of minutes that we need to approve. Uh, there were links in the board book. Um, I, I'm I'm so sorry. I just apparently the Zoom gods are are against this this proposal. So. Uh, apologies for just falling off, but I, I don't know what happened. But I think my message was clear. I mean, it, uh, Charlie's made himself available if that's something we want to avail of ourselves of. Right, and I think we will be doing that in the, this fall. Okay, is there a motion to approve both sets of minutes from June 24 and June 17? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Anna. All in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, thank you. We have um, two resignations as well. Uh, one from Jack Boimer, our athletic director, and another from Pamela, House Pamela Hausler, 
who um, is a nurse or was a nurse at uh, West. Um, so is there a motion to accept the resignations? So moved. Was that Anna? That was Anna. Okay. Second. Thank you, Heather. All right, any discussion? I don't think they probably need any discussion. They've already resigned. Yes, Sam? I was just curious if we have another athletic director um, in the works or um, any thoughts on that? Sherry tells me they have some strong candidates. Yes, yeah, so we're in the, uh, um, Dr. Singleman and Aaron is in the process of interviewing and we do have some very strong candidates. So optimistic and um, Jack's gonna stay on to get um, until the beginning of the school year to help with uh, preseason. Okay, great, awesome. Um, and then another question that's not one of the um, uh, resignations I see here, but I feel like I saw, I heard about it at least. Is Cody King Creedy here this year? No, he's not. He resigned in the spring. He was going yeah. to be the middle school um, uh, principal at Hartford Middle School. And so I know that we were replacing. Um, Garen, who's replacing Cody? Tom Emery is taking that position. Ah, love it. Okay, thrilled to hear that. Uh, who's taking Tom Emery's position because he was doing so much? <laughs> well, we got it. We're all good, Sam. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm 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 a little behind. It's been a long summer. So um, if we talked about this before, I apologize for bringing it up again. <laughs> All right, all in favor of accepting the resignations, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. We now have a second opportunity for the public to, um, to uh, make any comments or questions for the board. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Wait, I'd like to speak, but I, I don't know how to raise my hand. I'm sorry. That's okay. I see you. Uh, and it didn't even necessarily be public. Uh, I was just asking, someone mentioned that we, they wanted to see the blood drives back at the high school, which I'm in huge support of. So I was just kind of throwing that out there to see what's going on there. And if we're able to bring it back, if it's not already in the works. That's a good question. Um, I'm actually working at the blood mobile on next Friday, I think it is, or maybe it's this Friday. So I will ask that question, Ryan. I know they've been using the, uni the uni Unitarian Universalist Church and the, um, the uh, Masonic Temple in town. And I think they stopped at Woodstock because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just- It would be great to bring that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it was good for the students. Yeah, it was the first time I gave blood. I was was when I was a student at the high school, and now I'm a regular donor. I've I've donated regularly throughout my whole life, and I think it's because I started at such a young age doing it. So I think it's a great idea. Well, they have critical need right now. I know that. So thanks for bringing that up, Ryan. Anybody else? All right, um, we do not have an executive session today. So now we have a time to process um, our board self-evaluation and implement recommendations for improvement. Does anybody have any recommendations for improvement or self-evaluate? Our little meetings are nice. <laughs> Out of line meetings are nice. <laughs> Don't get used to it. <laughs> so that would say <laughs> it's still light out, and we might actually walk out. And we, we're trying to be more efficient, in, especially in our planning of the agendas. <laughs> Anybody else have a comment to make? Well, I appreciate all of you taking time in August for coming tonight, being present one way or another, and um, we have a, you know, we have a lot of work ahead of us, so I think we've got to buckle up our seatbelts and go with it and do what we can to 
do accomplish the goals we have set for ourselves and including uh, a new school. So thank you, everybody. Is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, Corinne so moved it. Please second. Yeah. <laughs> there was, they were fighting to that. I'll, I'll let <laughs> Sam have it. I'll give it, I'll give it to Anna. All right. All in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See you uh, in and September. Sam says. <laughs>